Hey, thought I would touch base with you on some cool things, mainly organelles inside of a cell. If you remember that cells, they have these whole bunch of little tiny organs that do things inside of them, specific things, kind of like your heart does a specific thing, like pump blood and your brain does a specific thing, like, you know, think and listen and help you interpret light that you see in your eyes to an image that you might form in your head. So cells have these little organelles, right? And we've talked about a couple of them. Um, I wanna talk about ones that are in both plants and animals and really briefly get to their function because um, yeah, it's good to know the differences. So plants and animals. And I have some demonstrate, you know, little guys to help us out. So this is my little gray tree frog. Uh, he is uh, a one-eyed gray tree frog. You see his eye there, it looks really good. But you know, like if I give me the other side, I don't know if we'll be able to get it for the missing eye doesn't doesn't really work too well that's okay he still eats like a champ give him a little cricket he's like ow speaking of eating he doesn't eat plants however he does get his energy ultimately from a plant which got its energy ultimately from the sun and we did that in another video on the chloroplast which is a plant only organelle right so frogs are carnivores they only eat other animals when they're an adult now when they're a kid a tadpole, they're actually really good at eating algae, like a plant. Their whole digestive system has to change when they turn into adult carnivore that this guy is. Oh no, and he's got his bad eye showing. You know, there's a little one-eyed guy, but he's cute. He still eats like a champ. Anyway, so let's talk about the organelles found in both animals and plants, frog butts and leaves. All right, um, first one, nucleus. It's like the brain, okay? This is where all the information for the cell is stored. I'll show you a picture, pull it up right now. All right, let's say this is my like representative cell. Um, it's, you know, roughly spherical shape, okay? And it, there's a whole bunch of organelles here on the outside. Anyway, the nucleus is right here. It's this roughly spherical shaped object that you see. And in the middle is something called the nucleolus. Now this thing makes ribosomes. We'll get to that here in a second. But in here is where the DNA is stored. So let me find you another picture for you. Like, you know, you can, right here, you got the cell. That's the one I'm showing you. There's the nucleus. There's the nucle nucleolus. So great, right? Uh, if I scroll around, kind of same thing. You see the cell here outlined in blue. And then right here, this big thing is the nucleus. And inside it is the swirly, squiggly chromosomes. That's the DNA that a cell has. Now here's the thing. Whether it is an animal or a plant or a fungus or a eukaryote like you know a protist we all have a nucleus that's right all eukaryotic things have a nucleus protists plants animals fungus we all have them it's like the brain the control center the blueprints for making a building um, it has all the information to make you you and all the information to make a plant a plant and all the information to make a frog a frog and here's the thing the nucleus is there. It's a membrane that surrounds the DNA. It kind of acts like protection, an extra little protection, a little fatty membrane around it. So let's go into another one that they both have, and that is a vacuole. Vacuoles are just big storage bags. So sometimes you need a drink. You might use a water bottle, okay? Uh, plants and animals have vacuoles, okay, inside them, I and they're basically like a water bag. We can store other things in there too. We can store like sugars in there if we want, salts in there, stuff like that, but it's basically a big storage thing. And they both have them. Now, plants have really large vacuoles, and animals have pretty tiny ones. Plants generally have like one. Animals have like a lot, but they're small. Why would an animal need a small vacuum when a plant need a really large vacuole? Here's why. I've never known a plant when it gets thirsty, like during a drought, if it hasn't rained for a while, that can pick up its roots and like waddle on down to a creek to get a drink. It has to have big storage bins in case it doesn't rain for a while. Animal on the other hand, if this guy, you know, he's out in the wild jumping around, he doesn't get enough water, he can jump to a lake or a creek or a stream or something like that and give himself a little bath and he absorbs it through his skin, he's got water. Done. Animals have little vacuoles, plants have a big one. They need to store water longer, okay? How about we talk another of our now? Hmm, mitochondria. How about mitochondria? Well, let's do that one. So these are found in both plant, plant and animal cells. You can think of it like the power plant of the cell. This thing is generating power. Where does it get it from? Well, if it's a plant, okay, this plant makes sugar in its chloroplast. 
That's where it does photosynthesis. That sugar is fine and all, except it doesn't really do anything. You have to like burn it in a power plant. So plants have a mitochondria. It's a couple of membrane-y things. There are squiggly membranes in here. There's the fluid inside of it. Uh, but this is where the chemical reaction takes place of burning sugar, okay? So plants have it and, you know, a little froggy's got it, okay? Because he eats sugar, that is in another animal, and then that gets digested, brought to his cells, and his cells burn it to get energy, to get power, okay? So they both have it. Plants, they can make all the sugar they want, but they can't grow unless they use that sugar for energy, okay? So they need to burn it as well. The process of burning it is a whole nother thing. Um, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be more complicated than just talking about the different organelles. But the big trick is here, they both have it. This thing is the power plant of the cell. It's making energy from the cell, for the cell, so that it can be used, okay? Let's talk about another one. Maybe the endoplasmic reticulum. That's right, the endoplasmic reticulum. There are two of them, there's a smooth one, it's right here, and there's a rough one that's got a bunch of little bumps all over it, okay? And they have a few jobs. They are located right next to the nucleus. So when RNA, we haven't talked about the RNA will leave the nucleus and go to one of these uh, endoplasmic reticulums, and it can be moved around like a conveyor belt. Hopefully you can see that it could just move around through these tubes, and uh, eventually it can get to a ribosome, and a ribosome can read that RNA, and with the help of energy from the mitochondria, it can start looking at the, the instructions and then making something from it. This is like looking at the Lego instructions and then making a Lego building or a spaceship or something, right? The ribosomes do that. And in order to do that, in order to make proteins, they need to use energy. And that energy came from the mitochondria, which we just talked about, right? So um, that's what the rough, endoplas or rough endoplasmic reticulum is doing. It's making proteins. And the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is making things like hormones and other chemicals that we use in our bodies as well. Uh, and once those things are made, we need to put them in a package so they could be moved around the cell to somewhere special where it might be needed. Like if you needed to mail something somewhere else, you might go to a post office. And in order to do that, you have to put it in an envelope or a box or a package or something, right? So the cell can do that too. It just uses a special organelle called a Golgi apparatus. Golgi apparatus kind of looked weird. Bunch of series of fatty membranes. You put that chemical in there and they pop off in these little like fat bubbles that we call vesicles. And here's the thing, whether you're a plant or a frog, your cells need to transport materials and they do that using vesicles made by the Golgi apparatus okay now they get moved um through the cytoplasm that's the liquid inside of the cell they flow proteins can move them around um the cytoskeleton there's like a skeleton inside there that can move these things around but they move around in the cell places they need to go and uh they get used however they need to be used by the cell but in order to get there they need to be packaged up okay so i want to talk about two more things because this guy after he eats food he's made proteins from it in the ER he's packaged them up sometimes there's some waste products you know like when you eat food you get rid of some waste right cells have to get rid of waste too they get rid of that in the blood sometimes it's packaged up right here but most of the time it's packaged up in another vesicle that we call a lysosome so let me show you a picture of that it looks like a bubble here we are a lysosome right kind of looks funky. Basically, it's a big bubble that carries waste products and then brings it to the, the edge of the cell's membrane. It can get popped out into the fluid around the cell and it can be transported to your blood and then your blood brings it to your kidneys, your kidneys filter out and you, you can get rid of it, okay? But it's basically a way to get rid of waste. And again, both, you know, this guy gets rid of waste, you know, froggy is cute, and then the, the leaf gets rid of waste. They're found both in plant and animals, right? In both of them. The other thing we haven't talked about is ribosomes. Ribosomes make proteins. Ribosomes are found in both. Um, there were those little pebbly things on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now they read DNA and they make proteins from it. It's as simple as that. So um, yeah, those are the ones that I'm going to talk about today that are found in both plant and animal cells. Um, whether you're a little frog, a human being, a plant, my dog who's laying by my side, doesn't really matter. Found them both. Take it easy.